Hi, welcome to our Long Came a Spider project. Um, this is painted on um, our brand new laser cut um, spider web plaque. We also have a laser cut spider web Lazy Susan panel. Uh, if you blew this pattern up and made it so that this was right here, you could very easily paint this on either surface. Um, what I like about this is it comes with these laser cut holes on the edges, so I could hang it with a ribbon by my door or whatever. I could wind ribbon in it and hang a ribbon at the bottom. Um, I can use these fantastic um, wreath hangers that I love. You could put it in front of a natural wreath and have some stuff coming out the back and then hang it on your wreath hanger by your door. Um, lots and lots of ways to display this. You put it in a plate rack, um, you know, whichever, whatever direction you want to go. Um, there's tons of techniques in this. We have a very dreamy, mystical, magical background. We do some dry rubbing, some dry brushing. We do a lot of wet and wet with some extender. Um, so there's a lot of things to learn in this project. There's how to rescue, <coughs> rescue your project. When you put a giant trail of blue through something, <coughs> there shouldn't be a trail of blue through. Pardon me. And so um, I hope that you enjoy the lesson, and I hope you enjoy the project. All right, we're going to prep our um, panel. This is the laser cut spiderweb panel. And we're going to use a multi-purpose sealer. We're going to use an Italian sash brush. The reason these are unique is because they're very, very flexible bristles without being sloppy flexible. And what they do when they spread is they allow you to get into all these little grooves. Okay, so it's a really kind of hard thing. If, you, if it's not long enough like these bristles, you can't get that sideways kind of um, stipple action. So we'll use multi-purpose sealer, and we'll go ahead and get it prepped on both sides because you can reverse this and flip it over. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tap sideways into these grooves, and it actually doesn't take any time really at all. But notice it's a little lumpy looking on top. What we'll do is we'll use our um, varnish sponge and we'll just blot it or spread it out on top. Okay, so once we get that done, and then we'll do the same thing on the back to eliminate any drippy kind of stuff, and we can kind of soft that up too. Okay, so that's how we're going to do this, and then we'll wipe over the whole front with this. Now what this does for us when we get the whole thing sealed is it makes it a nice, um, it's a multi-purpose seal sandwich. Okay, and that means that the weather and the elements and the liquids and waters and scratches and all that kind of stuff aren't going to permeate the piece. And this is actually MDF or a hard MDF, and it is super duper hard. So you don't really have to worry too much about that, but you always want to start. When you're going to make something you want to hang out every year, especially fall is a bad time of year, you want to make sure that you're prepping it right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get the whole thing done, and then we'll go for our base coat. Okay, now I've got both sides done at the same time. I'm going to use these little triangles to support this off of the surface. And that has little, um, it has little nylon, it's made out of nylon, so it doesn't actually mar your surface. So you can set things on it that are wet, and I can go looking for any kinds of bubbly things that I have left over, which I just have one or two. And that worked out just brilliantly. And I did time myself, and I think it took all of three minutes to do both sides. So it actually does really quick. It's the magic of this stinking brush is what I think it is. All right, we're going to base coat with Payne's Gray. And the only reason we're using Payne's Gray is because I feel like it might actually cover. The next color that I use is going to be something that doesn't have a good um, covering ability. So I'm going to get a coat of blue down before anything else. I'm not going to worry about my outer edges. I actually did some playing on the other side just to see what color scheme I want and I changed my mind completely. So just get a nice even coat. Doesn't matter if you get any paint out there. Just make sure you don't make wads in the, the little cuts. I'm smoothing that out. I'm going to blow dry it. I'm going to put one more coat I think on it and then we'll be ready to start our faux finish for the background. I'm going to flip my varnish sponge over. I've got my nitrile gloves on, and you can see that they have all kinds of stuff on them, but it doesn't come off. It seems to stick to the glove, and it's still flexible and everything. You can use these. I made a pair last like 10 months a year or something like that. I've got Prussian blue now, <clears throat> and make sure you shake these weird colors up that we don't use very often. Hey, it doesn't come off, it, except for when I flake it onto my piece. 
Um, if you try to flake off the paint, it does come off. Okay, so here we go. We're going to make this a brighter blue now. Okay, so we'll just make that. We'll do a couple of coats of this. Just to get that good brightness going. So, um, on the gloves, um, I tell my husband this, when we use these for doing our jalapenos and things like that, if you wash your hands just like you would if you got paint on them, then you can prevent this anything from staying on your gloves. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about them mucking up or whatever, but they're super sturdy. All right, so I'm going to dry this using the blow dryer in between, and we are going to um, um, just go ahead and do a couple of coats of this just to make sure that we're a good deep blue in the middle. All right, we're going to do a faux finish in the background. Um, I've got two coats of the, two coats and peeling paint. Okay, so definitely wash your gloves. <laughs> now I feel silly. Okay, I'm going to do one more coat of the Prussian Blue, but I'm going to use just a drop of the Drying Time Extender. Just, I mean like three drops in my paint. Okay, because I want it to stay wet. It's really interesting when this dries, it's definitely a purple cast color, but when it goes on, it's very, very blue. Okay, so we want this just to stay wet. I'm going to add just a little bit more extender, so maybe like six drops. Okay, let's make sure that just kind of stays wet. Okay, I'm going to take the gloves off. I've got three of these number one ovals. I'm going to dip into blue violet, dioxazine purple, and holly green. The holly green plus this blue should create a um, it should create a lovely um, blue green kind of color. So we're going to go in, and I'm probably going to need to rewet this as I go with the Prussian blue. I'm already seeing that it might be drying. So this would have been maybe better to apply in the um, with the the brush instead of the varnish sponge. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit there, and then I'll go in and I'll soften those edges and just re-wet. And I'm going to put out a puddle of my drying time extender and pick up as I need to. Okay, and I think I'll just go over that. That's what I'm going to do. It's all wet. I don't want to puddle, but I'm going to kind of work this with a bunch of colors. So I want it to be able to stay wet and play. Okay, so you can see where we're going here. Oops. Okay. So now we can slip slap. We can go into all of our colors. Okay. Put a generous amount of this color out and about. And then I'm going to go back into the Prussian Blue. I'm going to blot off on my paper towel. And I'll just tone those two colors together. Okay. As one color takes over and you don't want it to, just go back into another color and bring it back. Okay, so I'll dry that off, switch brushes. Load a little bit of extender in my brush. Now we'll go into some purple. It's going to totally end up being a unique color for everybody's piece. It's a really cool technique. Okay, so we've got that. Ooh, see how I plopped that down there and it's just like a little bit too strong? Wipe off your brush. Go back in, pick some up, wipe off your brush, blend it together. The purple tends to get swallowed up by the blue anyway, so you could be a little heavy-handed. I just had it kind of lumpy. X's for blending. Don't want too much drama movement, meaning like you don't want it to look like a stormy night. Now I'm going to go into the green. I'll switch brushes again. I've got a damp brush. I only have like four of these brushes. and. One of them was wet. Okay, I don't want to use the damp brush, so I'm going to switch to a... Oh, no, there's another one. This one's only a three-quarter, but it'll work. Pick up a little drying time extender. And my brush. If you put water with this, it makes like a special effect. Now I've got the holly green. 
and I'm a little bit timid about this holly green, so I'm going to go in and give it some holly greenness, which should mix with my color, and it should make it a lovely blue-green, and it's doing a great job. start looking for balance. I know I'm going to, I'll have to pick a side. Maybe I'll go here. So I know I'm going to have a black cat here. So maybe we want to brighten it up, up in this other area up here. And don't forget you can dry rub after. Okay, so you can do stuff afterwards. I'll pick up my blue brush. Bring those colors up up there. If I want to bring it back down, I can. Or bridge those two colors together. Okay, so we'll have a cat head here. We'll have the pumpkins over here. We'll give him a little bit more over here. And let's see, where's my pattern at? Okay, so we'll go with a little bit more purple up here. And we'll work it in. It's kind of got a ghosty night looking story. All right, while we're still wet, we're going to pick up some festive green with our green brush, just dirty brush, blot it on the paper towel, and we're going to bring that color up just a little bit. Okay, I can you see. Okay, that's kind of where we're at so far. If we don't bring the colors up, we won't be able to see them when they dry. I don't want it to make I don't want this to be screaming at me, but I do want the colors up. And what they're doing right now is they're blending with all the colors underneath them. So this is just really one of those things you're not going to be sure what you're actually getting because you're going to be blending with everything. Don't be afraid of it. This is just a fun thing to do. And if you hate it, then just simply go over the top of it, with a, let it dry, and base coat it again. Okay, now we'll go with a little bit of the Desert Turquoise in our blue, uh, blue violet brush. Okay, not everywhere. Let the blue violet sit and then go maybe into some of your greens and blend them there. Okay, that's getting really, really cool looking. Okay. Down here I'm going to have so much stuff. I keep kind of playing in there and you need to get out of that area. Alright, in the purple we're going to go into our lavender color. No, that's not it. Yeah, lavender. Sorry. We kind of eliminated any purple. Let's get some of that back. This is why drying time extender is so cool. Gives you a chance to work and play. Okay, we'll go into a little bit more green. And then maybe we won't mix everything down. Maybe we'll blend just the edges of this and allow some areas to stay a little higher. And we'll go into our blue and let some of that sit on there. These are such fun colors. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit. 
I think what's the most fun is I haven't used four paint brushes or three paint brushes in my hand at one time in a long time, so I'm having fun doing that. Okay. Up here. Things are getting a little draggy. I could re-wet them. I could go into this clean brush and blend between. All right, and so just a little bit of our blue out here to the outer edge. All right, I think we have a very fun color background. All right, I've got quite a mess here, and one of the things that I really like when we're doing this really messy um, stippling thing, and you get a whole bunch of um, dry the multi-purpose sealer. Sometimes the multi-purpose sealer, if I have it on my hands, will actually stay on, and when I'm in the shower, I can't, you know, get it off with the soap, the water, the hot, the hot water. So do wear gloves and stuff with that stuff. It's very, very good product. It seals. It even seals my fingers. So I'm just gonna miss this um, nonstick mat. Oh my, water is almost gone. Drat. Okay, I'll squirt that. I'll let this sit for just a minute and then I'll show you how I get that cleaned off. Okay, I let that sit there for just like two minutes. And then I just take this, oh, I've got the wrong side of it, this little um, scraper, a little handy scraper, and it just scrapes everything right off. And I'll just kind of loosens. This um, mat is really, really cool because, like, even hot glue gun doesn't stick to it. Um, Two-part epoxy, which sticks to everything, does not stick to this. It just comes right on off. Um, it's just really, really, really a non-stick mat. So just a magical thing to have in your craft room because you can make a big mess on it. I've taped two or three of them together. Um, they're pretty good size, but sometimes you need a little bit of extra mess space and then everything just peels off into a nice little glom of stuff. And they're very durable, unless you mistake it for a healing cutting mat, and then it's not quite as forgiving. It is definitely not cut proof. All right, next we're going to sand it just to make it smooth. And that'll leave some scratchy business going on on it, but we won't worry about that. We'll wipe it off if we have any little raised edges. I've got a little bit of raised stuff going on in the middle where it was grabbing. Don't let it grab when you're doing your faux finish. And then we'll wipe that off. And then we go on to deepening these colors just a little bit more. All right, sadly in the world of imports, the biggest brush that I can still get that's a scumbly brush that I can dry rub is this um, green handle. It's got a soft grip handle. Um, but this is the only one left. Um, we have all sets of them and stuff, but Everything else has been discontinued. So we're just going to do a dry rub technique. I put my brush in the paint, dry it all off on my paper towel. Now I'm gonna come over here, put glasses on to my green areas, and I'm gonna deepen that color. Notice how that color came right up. Okay, that's what dry rubbing will do for you. It'll sit right on top of those colors. So that's why you wanna use colors in the area that relate to what's underneath. Make sure I'm dry. The color underneath serves as almost like a little dinner plate. And so I can put colors, I'm gonna put colors here and there, throughout the piece, even in my purple areas. I want those colors to kind of move around a little bit. All right, then we're gonna go into Purple Cow. Love some of these names for our purple areas. And so if you're getting too strong a move, wipe off more paint. That needs to be a little bit softer. And you know what, look at, that's called chalky. I'm just gonna lick that right off of there. Yuck, 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 we don't want that. So purple cow is too dark. So we'll go into the lavender that we used and we'll pick up the color with the lavender. So when you get that where it looks like you were scratching on a chalkboard with a piece of white chalk, that means that your color is too light for the area that you've stippled in. Okay, so you'd want to move to a lighter area or 
move to a darker color to begin with. Still getting a little bit of chalkiness. I wonder if that's the paint underneath. Still coming off really chalky. Okay, time to do a different technique. All right, we're going back to our drying time extender. We're gonna put a coat on. I need to dry one of my brushes off really well because it's got water in it. Drying time extender and water are allergic to each other. The green brush looked great as the dry brush, but these darker colors are not behaving well. So we'll just go ahead and put this on. Drying time extender, by the way, is a great thing to put in your brush after you um, after you rinse it, and it'll form your brush into a nice um, a nice shape while you're you know moving on to you know, putting them away and stuff. And it can just stay in your brush and condition them until you um, take them out again. Just kind of an extra little tip there. Okay, so we're gonna get that nice and smooth, but I want to dry some of that off because it's a little bit puddly. This is where you really get to see your colors. So I'm just going to dry that down a little bit with the back of my paper towel. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to pick up, I want to increase my blues, so I'm going to go into a mix of my um, blue violet and my desert turquoise. And I'm just going to softly with very little paint because I'm not mixing into the paint underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in a little bit of both, that way I don't get anything too strong. Okay, we'll just keep kind of walking around, picking things up where we need to pick them up. Then I'll wipe my brush out, and I'm going to go into my purple lavender color. Ooh, still, so that is just coming up chalky. We will go backwards one to diox. And pick up just a little bit of that. And I'm dirty brush because, frankly, I'm moving all these things around together anyway, so why not? Okay, if you get something real weird in your brush, then stop doing it, but okay, that's a big blob of purple right there. I'll wipe out my brush, and here's what you can do when you have drying time extender on. So you can just back the whole thing down. Okay, so now I'm back down to my original um, little blob that I had there. Okay, we'll go in and re-blend. Okay, just very, very feather light touch. I'm looking at my pattern. Okay, as I'm looking at this, I want to see where things are going to be. So he's going to have purple up by his ear. And we need to merge that with that green. We don't want any color to stand separated. <clears throat> okay, so over here we'll bring a little bit more purple as well. Got so much going on at the bottom, so I'm not even going to worry about that because everything overlaps. <clears throat> now we need to bring a little bit more. Let's bring our blue and our teal up. Up into our greens. We don't want that teal to get too far away from us. And I just keep blending it until I love it. Okay. That black cat's going to be there in the middle. That means that's going to be really dark. So we want him surrounded by a little bit of light. And we want that to blend with everything else going around. Don't want to leave a halo, so make sure you blend. Okay, then we can go into our nice big mops. <clears throat> and you just go straight up and down, and that'll take out any residual lines that you didn't want in between them. Mops are super friendly. I'm not worrying about those colors blending because, after all, we talked about it being okay. All right, I think that's good. All right, we're going to continue increasing the strength of our colors. And this you can do custom. You can decide how much you need. Everybody's hand is going to be a little heavier, lighter, whatever. And um, you just need to read your piece. But I'm still feeling pretty darn dark. So 
I'm going to pop up some color. I don't want it to become like, you know, splotches. I definitely want you to be able to see that there's some color there. And we can do some of this after as well. Don't forget to go in and out of your other colors. Don't, you know, don't worry about layering a little blue over a little bit of purple or green. <clears throat> and with a dirty brush straight into the holly or the festive green. Dirty brush, this is pretty dried off, so I'm not worried that it's going to really, um, really affect anything being dirty. Like I wouldn't go and intentionally dip your brush into the previous color to, to do this step. Okay, now see how that's getting just a little bit brighter? Now we can add a little too harsh. Dry that off a little bit more. We can add a little bit here and there if we have supporting under areas of lightness. Maybe we want just a little bit more green. It's got a good Hall Halloween tone to it, I think. Okay, so my color's wearing off. Now I'll go ahead and dip into, let's get some of our lighter purple going. I'm, I'm running away from this purple cow. I think we're going to go back to lavender and continue that way. That's what got us in trouble the last time. I'm really making sure that my brush is wiped off. So now I can support that color. You see how now it's not looking chalky, it's looking just lighter purple. Okay. Okay, I think at this point, until I get my pieces on here, I'm not going to know where I need specifically which colors, so I'm just going to go ahead and begin with my painting. I'm going to wash out all of these brushes that I've used and dry them, um, pinch them in a paper towel, set them aside to dry so that if, when I need to do this, like right now I actually have, I love this brush container, but last night when I finished filming, I plunked them all down in here, and then today I only had one brush left for doing this because, um, yeah, because they were all wet. So I'll go take care of these so that they're ready for me the next time I use use them. You know, I don't talk too much about the tracing aspect. Um, you don't. This is a piece of white tracing transfer paper. Sorry, and the white transfer paper. Notice that I have lots of squiggly little lines on here. The more worn out, the better, because when you're tracing a pattern onto something this dark, you want to make sure that you're very faint. This is perfect. I save my pieces for when I need really light lines, and I do the same with the, with the um, gray. All right, we're going to put a coat of extender on the pumpkins all the way up. Extender doesn't matter if you get it all over everything. <clears throat> I just brush an even coat, go both directions. All right, I'm going to use this clearly amazing um, filbert brush. Now you might think that the um, oval glaze and the clearly amazing are the same, but this one is thicker and it's got a more blunt cut to it and it makes an awesome little pity pat kind of brush. I really like it. I'm going to move my stuff so that I'm following, I'm pulling towards myself. And I'm going to use, um, yes, bittersweet chocolate. I'm just going to put, show you how much. I'm going to put just a little bit on the tip of my brush, and I might even pick up just a little bit of the extender. And we're going to have a mop to go with it as well. Okay, and so then what we want to do is we want to do shape following um, strokes with this. We want to follow the basic shape of the pumpkin. So we want to shave at the base, and we just want to brush that in and make it kind of mark the dark spots. 
Now that one thing that this um, drying time extender will do to you is it will make it shiny so you might have to stand up and get a better view. Notice how nice and even and smooth that's going on. That's what I love about this brush. Now I don't mind if this ends up being just a little bit painterly. Painterly meaning that you see brush strokes. Notice now I'm going to go down, back down in there and I'm going to deepen and leave. So I'm laying my brush down just a little bit more to leave that paint behind. Okay. And we want to bring this up over here. Kind of frame it in a little bit. <clears throat> I can go off my edge with the extender right there and I can just wipe it off. Matter of fact, I had played around with the technique over here and then just wiped it all off with a little bit of extender on my rag. So you, you really do end up with quite a bit of drying time. <clears throat> I'm going to lift this up, see what I've got, blend a little bit more. Okay, now I can go into this if I need to. Got to lift it for the glare. I can mop anything that just makes me a little unhappy. Okay, I like the streaks. I'm not sure I need this up as high over here as I've got it. So what I'll do is I'll take my extender brush, blot it into more extender, and I'll wipe that back. Okay, I think that that's going to not be so necessary. <clears throat> okay, I'll we'll switch over to the other side. I'm going to be pulling towards myself. The reason I'm doing this this way is if you floated to, <clears throat> to make that that big, it would be a ginormous float, and it would be very difficult to do. So this is just another method for getting a huge, huge area to be floated. I'm going to mind my line here. I've got extender out over my edge. And then I want to erase the fact that I went sideways and not shape following. I can always float next to that edge to sink it in. <clears throat> okay. Let me get a good base good deepness to the base. Okay, so we've got streaks and then I've got a little bit of where my brush is sitting down marks. Let's go back in. I'm mopping with the whole entire brush. Now I can go in with a smaller brush, smaller mop, and I can tease that color out. Okay, and I can kick some back. It's really absolutely amazing what you can do with some mop brushes. <clears throat> okay, so you can also tickle and feather as well. The other thing that you can do if you choose to is you could go slip slap with the mop. You could go this way and this way, and that'll kind of eliminate some of the shape following strokiness if you wanted it to be eliminated. <clears throat> Sorry about the little nose thing going on here. Okay, I'll pick it up and take a look. I think that gave me some depth down there. I think I might want just a little bit more on this guy. Just a touch more. Okay, and I'll use big sweeping strokes. And then I'll go back and play with the mop a little bit more. Got a little kind of a chunk down here. 
<clears throat> this is where the artist buddy would play really well, but we know that it messes with the angles on camera, so. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and hit that with the blow dryer. All right, we're going to go ahead and apply drying time extender to the kitty cat. <clears throat> Be careful of your, if you're not quite completely dry, be careful of your um, pumpkin areas that have paint. <clears throat> Make sure your brush doesn't have water in it. I'm using the same um, clearly, clearly Amazing brush. I think this is the number 12. It's like my favorite magical one. Okay, and I'm going to slip slap in the middle of the cat's face with blue violet without any black down. It's just going to brighten the middle of his face. Okay, and I think I need to shake my paint. My, my puddle of paint is very flat, and my coverage and my color on here is not very good, so... That's much better. Can you see that? <clears throat> so bring it down into his collar. I'm not going to worry about going on the green. Okay, so when I get that the way I think I want it, I'll go and apply just a little bit to the middle of his tail. and then on his fingers. I'm gonna have to switch down a brush, I think, for this. And I think we'll go again in his face. on his chest. Obviously that won't be as much. And then we'll blot, blot, uh, mop around the edges and bring it out into that space. Can you see how much easier this is than um, some of the, you know, float in the middle of something techniques? This is just a really nice little technique. I'm going to switch down a brush. Brush size to get the fingers correctly. I want it at the top, fading down. We won't do too much detail to this fingers, so they could potentially almost be done right about now. We're going to get Desert Turquoise next. Dirty brush. Flick up my paper towel, and then I'll just go ahead and give them one more highlight. Somebody didn't flick on the paper towel very well. Okay. The idea with this is that you want to see one color and the other transitioning. So if I've screwed that up, I can go in and mop. And i got a little bit of something funny weird going on here. There we go. That's better. I've taken the edge off, top off of this. Okay, now I'll have to dry the middle of this to be able to um, do the next color, otherwise I think I'll dig a hole. But I will go ahead on the middle of this table and dirty brush pick up a little bit of, no, I've got to put down a little bit more blue. My blue wasn't showing on the tail very well. And we can mop the edges if we really want them to blend nicely. So see how the black is doing its own little self-shading thing. 
Like I've already got my shading out of the way on the edge of the tail because I have got that black exposed right there. I'm just hitting the edges. Okay, we don't want to leave that little corner right there, so we'll get down in there. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll try picking up a little bit of the desert turquoise. And I think I'll switch to the smaller brush. Flick on my paper towel, because I want this just to be a scant amount of paint. And I'm going to go up the middle of my blue. Okay, notice how I'm getting that kind of rough, painterly kind of look. I'm leaving little sharp edges. It gives movement. It's almost like you're slip slapping, but you're not. Okay, what would happen if I screwed this up and or messed this up, or however you want to say it? I could go back in with my black, or maybe I want to bring up a little bit of shade at the base of the tail where I didn't leave it. I could just come in with my black and then just create whatever look I want to want to create. Maybe my fingertip down here got too far down. I could just easily just come up and do this while the paint's still wet and just put it back in. So it's very reversible. Um, I think I can probably go into this chest area with the um, desert turquoise. Looking on my paper towel just really faintly. Just want to be able to see stuff there. Yeah, you know, shall we try the face? I think we'll try the face. It's all wet. I've got my brush. Okay, so we're just going to, we're going to go slip slap. Now I can also dry brush, um, dry rub this. So I think I'll do just a couple more little strokes. And then I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the Lazy Susan. This has got um, these, whoops, get, just, get you going here. I'm going to kill myself. Um, it's got all these different levels that you can put this on. So I can put this up or I can, I can lay it flat and you can lock it in just like that with the little wedge thing. And what's great about this is as we're rotating around, then you can just turn it to wherever you're working on next. <clears throat> All right, next we're going to shade the hat with a black green. I was going to do evergreen, but I don't think it'll even show. <clears throat> so this is where the benefit of having the Lazy Susan comes in, is I can get the right angle for my float. Okay. If you get any kind of stripage, like I've got a little bit of not very well blended, just go in, mop on the clean edge, and erase the stripage. And then to clean your mop, you just um, use a wet spot <coughs> on your um, palette paper. Okay, then we'll go, we're going to cut this. We've got the toe, I've got an angle shader. So I'm leaning back on my brush and then I'm laying it back down and I'm just tickling this little spot in and then I'll wipe that back. Okay, and I'll reverse the process here. And I'll wipe that back. Okay, so now see how that makes it look like the hat's more on top of his head. Okay, we'll need to shade underneath the hat underneath his brim. That can be quite dark under there and you can draw that down. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Now we need to do some shading up here but I need to wait until this guy is fully dry otherwise I'll cut through the middle of it. Right, I'm going to use the Ghost Rider 
and I'm going to decide if I want these stems to kind of curl up. I'm thinking maybe, 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 maybe. Gives it just a little bit more interest. Then we'll take our um, crescent brush and we're going to load into, I think we'll start with um, holly green, even though I don't know that it's really going to show up. <clears throat> and we're going to highlight, yep, yeah, it's showing up. Dry that off. We're going to dry rub the highlights into the middle of those flipped areas and then up the middle. <clears throat> Goodness. And then up the middle of the stem itself. And I'll switch to a, a smaller brush to get that to do that. And then bring that down. Okay, so see how that already establishes a little bit of a twist. Go the same thing over here. Now when I float, it's going to kind of unify things just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, we'll switch to a smaller one. Ah. Okay, this one's the baby baby. It's nice if you get now. See, I can lock this now if I don't want anything moving. I'll lock that lazy Susan. These um are actually made strong enough when we um when we first brought these in had a class and every we had um, a bunch of ladies who um, either had shoulder problems, back problems or whatever, or had age um, related stuff going on and they couldn't, uh, we had a, a fireplace screen that we were doing and they were three feet by three feet and so we had this redesigned from a basic design with a much bigger um, thing and with a hardwood base so that it would actually support a three foot by three foot sheet of plywood and so they're actually super duper um, durable and sturdy. All right, next we'll pick up some of the festive green and we'll do a little bit of our highlighting with that. I can unlock it now since I'm going to be kind of wandering around. I'll try it off a little bit more. And now we want our highlights to stay more towards the center as we build them. So as we repeat them, don't go from side to side so much. I'm going to give that just a little bit more there. <clears throat> so I'll go up and down. Switch to a bigger brush. See how that's getting that kind of up the middle stuff going. Same thing here, we'll just go up that middle. Okay, we'll repeat with a little bit. And this one I'm a little worried about. This is the yellow green color. We'll see how this works. Repeat with yellow green. Can we even see it? Maybe not. Maybe I don't need to worry at all. Okay, I'm dirty brush loading this too. Make sure I'm dry so that I can get a good look. Okay, I can't, I can't say that I really see that very much. So we're going to switch to a dry brush technique. So I'm going to use a number eight, Patty's favorite dry brush, and it's cut like an oval glaze. So all of these little bristles um, are going to create like a whole bunch of scratches. I'm going to load my paint a little bit uniquely. I'm going to come over here into this festive green and I'm going to load it really juicy. Both sides at first. Okay, and I'm going to bend that. It's, with this technique you can really kind of wreck your brush, so make sure you get the Winsor Newton brush cleaner and restore because you can get all that paint out. Now when I'm juicy on the top like that, I'm going to be painting from the dry bottom, but that's what you want is a juicy top. 
then I flick on the paper towel one time. Okay, that's just to prevent any stop and start marks. And my goal is to make these colors just a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to just streak the colors and see how that just really pops. I think I would still dry rub, but I would um, definitely follow with this technique. Reload as you need to. It's really amazing how much paint you need on your brush when you're doing this technique. Okay, then we can streak using the skinny edge of our brush. Okay, and now I'll dry that off. Dirty brush into the yellow green, which might need to be shaken. Maybe that's what my problem is with this color. And then we're going to just gently lock myself down here. <clears throat> gently highlight up the middle. I think I've decided that I don't want this one to twist, so I'm going to go into the holly green. Is that holly? The festive green. I'm going to flick on my paper towel with the dry brush, and I'm going to just run the dry brush straight down, straight down the stem, just to kind of erase my beginning of that. I'm going to sneak on up to stem. And we'll wait. I'm going to wait until that dries because I used a generous amount of paint on it. Okay, in the meantime, we can come up here to the hat. And I think with this one, we're going to go ahead and dry rub <clears throat> in the middle because we're in a small enough area. And so we'll dry rub festive green that I've dried off. switch back to my tiny microscopic brush. I kind of tend to leave these off to the side unwashed and then at the end I use the brush cleaner and restore to make sure that I'm clean. Okay, we've got to get the rim or the brim or I'll switch to Highlighted. And then maybe look at the collar while we're down here. And I think we'll go ahead and shade on the hat with the black green. We also need a shade on the pumpkin stems, but I'm not sure I'm done with those yet. Okay, so we'll shade up the hat over the top. I'll erase any lines after I'm done. Let's see, let's go down the top. I want to be very skinny down here. And then I'll wait for this side to dry until I do the other side. Let's see what we can do with our pumpkin stems. We can shade on the top and shade on the bottom of where the stem crosses in front. <clears throat> That'll make everything kind of stand out more. Same thing here. Whoops, get a little dry. If things aren't moving, check the moisture of your brush. It's either too much or too little. Let's go ahead and shade the base. Base of the stem. 
it kind of self shaded because all I did was highlight up the top but shading it to anchor it I think is a good idea you can kind of drag that up that one corner right there we'll continue highlighting in the hat And I can do this a little bit more slip slap so I get a little bit of texture right in the front of the brim. Do the kitty cat's collar. I can repeat with the yellow green. And I can almost just drag that brush, almost like I'm dry brushing on its edge. Leave a little bit more in there. And then we'll get the hat. This one I want to leave it much more textury. wet I can go in here and just highlight that stem and we can shoot a highlight straight up the middle of this one and then repeat on our collar it's just the same three colors over and over again until we get our greens where we want them I'm getting a feeling that my yellow green is maybe coming out with a little bit of medium. It's not doing exactly what I want, so I'm going to shake it a little bit more. Okay, I'm shaken, not stirred, and we'll see if I can get a little bit more concentration of highlight going on. Yeah, I'm just feeling a little bit oily. Sometimes you have to um, just really shake them a lot. Okay, I think I'm going to rest all those areas right there. And I think I'll go ahead and add a shade on the cat's collar. On one side and the other. This way, when I'm on the Artist Buddy, I can always see where I'm spinning things. I mean, I can always see where I'm floating because I can turn it so that my brush is facing me, and then I can float so that my brush is also facing me. This is a really super duper good tip. Um, if you float away from yourself with the brush turned opposite, then you won't be able to see where you're going. Okay, and so we're gonna come up here, add this last little bit. And I'm doing exactly right now what I told you not to do. Okay. Lovely. All right, so his face is, the little guy's face is tucked up, kind of more up towards, let's see. We've got the spider peeking over the brim of his hat. So this would be our dark area right there on the brim. And then, so in this general eye area, this upper area where I've already built a highlight, we'll take um, Desert Turquoise, Crescent Brush, Dry Rub, and we'll just increase that attention in that area. Now he's got a little chin down here, so we don't want to bring it down too much because that's where things should start darkening back up. And I'm going to go into his ears. I've got them based in um, royal purple, so I think we'll use, let's see, 
Huh. Decisions, decisions. I think we'll go Vivid Violet. And we're going to get a little bit of this kind of glow sharing all over the piece, I believe, if my plan works out. So in his ears, we'll get a little bit of Vivid Violet going on to brighten those up just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take some Canyon Orange and my big dome brush and hope that this isn't screaming louder than anything. Now I've got my eyeballs based on there. One of the things I wanted to do is just kind of mark where they're at so that I know where my highlights are going to go. I'm going to go right through the eyeballs just to create my pumpkinness. We want to keep it darker at the edges. Okay, I'm just going to build these highlights. I'm going to go through some paper towels on this one. Try to stay out of Kitty's fingers. Matter of fact, I think I'll go ahead and mask his little fingers. <clears throat> Take a little bit of tape or a post-it note and just tape over the top. Hello. Okay, tough tape. Oops, I think that'll be more at the top, so we'll do it over here. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> now it won't stick. Okay. That's, um, making me very sad. Okay, here's what I'll do is I'll take out a Q-tip. A Q-tip? They're not cute. They're not Q-tips. They're cute tips and they're super sharp little Q-tips. So I will put that there so that if I get on his finger I can take that off. Okay, so I did. So I'll just lick it or spit on it and then just wipe it away. Trying to end sharply. Okay, that gives him a little pumpkin-y orange color, making me happier with my pumpkins. Of course, I didn't have anything done to them yet. I'll be boost that up. and float some black on those two if I wanted to. And now we'll start on the other guy. Yeah, more than highlighting, I think this is just more perking these guys up. And, and now they've eaten a gnat. Okay, and I like the scratches. I think those are attractive. If you get any little bristles, just brush them off. These are um, not expensive brushes, which might make them be cheap but they're invaluable. So we put up with a couple of loose hairs because you can't function or do things without them because of what they do. Okay, we're looking for a little bit of balance. Repeat one more time. This guy right here. I don't want it to be base coated, so I want to be careful not to go too far. Okay, now dirty brush, I've got to decide what I'm going to do next. We'll let them both dry for a minute. Okay, so we're going to take, I think, the marigold color with my dirty brush. 
And if I can find a spot that is clean. <clears throat> I'm going to bring highs on this upper inner area here. Get it yellowed up a little bit. Remember, shape following means you have to arch it out for the pumpkin shape. He can't all be going this way because of how his, he's angled. Share some of that. Okay. More. Rinse and repeat. Right. forget to get close to his fingers, ignore that they're there, and then just go wipe it off. It's easier to go through things and then go fix that than it is to fix the weird angles and stuff that you end up with around. If you do it right away, then the paint doesn't stick. shinier, a little bit harder, so we're going to make it a softer, section-y rub. Uh-oh, somebody went into her green paint. <clears throat> time for some more marigold and time for a new brush. I can switch over to um, the crescent brushes now. Definitely go through some paper towels with this technique. Let's see if we can neutralize that color. Okay. And now we want to use softer blending techniques. Give it a little bit more section look. Same over on this side. Oops. This is almost like little circles. Repeat until you get the desired height of color. What's neat about this technique is all of your existing layers are all coming through, and so you're really getting a very well blended look. Even though, like when you look at it close, it's like, what's going on? 
and it actually is very, very well blended. <clears throat> And it's, this part's really, really, really easy to do because you could close your eyes and do it. So super forgiving. If you've got students, this would be a great, great technique to teach them. <clears throat> okay. I think we're going to stall right there. Okay, I've blocked in a few more pieces. We're going to take some Napa Red and Dry Rub. Just ever so much around your edges. Don't get it to be a big orange or a red pumpkin. A couple of sections. And then down in this lower area. Okay, same thing up here. We're going to warm up the top. kiss a red. Okay, so one of the design features that, or one of the things that happens when I'm designing the piece while I'm filming, is that you get to learn from some of my mistakes. And I don't know if you saw, and ignore my bad base coat here, this is just me blocking it in. Um, I didn't like how we had this like band of green going on right here. So I, and I also didn't like that we had warm, cool up here, and we didn't really have anything carrying um, back and forth. So by putting a purple hat up here, we'll bring some warm up and then we'll have like a nice little triangle thing going on. And we'll still have the greens going across to be able to attach. But in the meantime, I also didn't like the way the hat snuck behind the ears. So I went ahead and blacked that out. And then I'm not liking how my cat is not popping forward. So I'll show you how we're going to deal with this. So we've got some fixing to do, and I love lessons where I can show you how to fix things. All right, so we're going to go into Desert Turquoise, and you'll do this on your piece according to what colors are there. Okay, now over here I've got some purple, and over here I've got purple, and maybe blue, and then some purple. I don't necessarily want the whole thing purple around him, because then he'll be glowing. But I'm going to treat this as a blue. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm just going to go right on top of my hat, and I'm going to use the Desert Turquoise. And I'm going to lighten and brighten the areas right around the cat without creating a halo. No halos. Okay, then I'll come over here, and now I'm going to stay out of his face area, but if I get on this black, all I have to do is just um, fix that. Okay, whoops, hello. And that's what happens if you don't rub on the paper towel enough. Okay. So. And one of the other things that I didn't like was I didn't like my the color of my green is not quite right yet. So I'll be patching and fixing some of that. Okay, so by bringing some of this blue down here into around his neck area. And let's bring it above his hat. We're just going to highlight the cat a little bit more. And I can go into my sky right now. This is a really good time to do that. And I can decide where I want a little bit more highlight too. <clears throat> okay, and I can even pop that up just a little bit more if I want to. I want to stay off of the tail if I can. I don't want to fix things if I can help it. Maybe over here on our tail. Now I can go near our tail and I can go make that edge black. That's not a problem. Maybe we'll bring a little blue over here near our stem that I'm going to fix anyway. And we're looking for more blue moments. Okay, so that's brighter. I'm liking that. I'm going to go a little bit more. And then I think we might even step up to one more highlight color. 
Ooh, yeah, that's picking that up nicely. We'll make him be nice and perky and you'll be able to see him really well. This is the time when I squint my eyes and try to just pretend like I know what I'm seeing. Okay. And you just let the colors just kind of blend. Okay, we've got some blue over here we could pop up. So now we'll get our Indian turquoise and see what that brings to the game. find some dry paper towel. The nice thing is your instructions will be written in English and not Patty um, design mode, okay? So you can follow the directions along and you can learn from what I did. Um, if you ever have it where things don't match up and you're wondering why the hat isn't green anymore when you're watching the, the video, you'll know why. Okay, so this will just tickle. We just ever so slightly want a tickle of this color. See how much better that's showing that cat off now? Much better. I am so much more pleased with that. One thing when you're working with these really dark colors like black um, and these dark blues and dark purples, you kind of have to sneak up on the color sometime. Okay, and I'm liking how this is just walking through. It's getting creepier and cooler. Like a little haunted night. And my intention is this little spider up here is going to be a blue spider. So he'll, he'll be our blue sitting on the middle of that hat. He'll be a black blue. <clears throat> now I'm going to go into my lighter purple which I don't have out, and I'm still not. I'm still afraid of purple cow. So we'll go into lavender. I suspect I'm going to get to purple cow with this um, with this move here, though. Get rid of that brush and get out a clean one so that we're getting the right colors. Now's when we can have sunshine and crispness and awesomeness happening. Happening. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just tickle in that color. We can blend those two colors together. We'll come in down here, the edge of him. See how that sky is just moving and melding and whatever words describe all that. I like it. Okay. All right, so now I have Purple Cow on my brush, and I'm going to ever so softly approach this. Okay, get a little bit over here. Okay, so now we've managed to brighten up behind him. We've managed to pop our colors up a little bit. <clears throat> now I'm going to go repair my black where I've stumbled over. I'm going to get a good base coat of royal purple on my hat. I'm not sure what's going to happen in Kitty's ears now that I've got the hat as purple, um, but that will all that will all come clearer as we go. I'm going to go into um, yellow ochre. We'll see how this works with a tiny little crescent brush and I want to just dry rub highlights towards the top of the eye. It's time to lock me down. I love how this doesn't wiggle once I'm locked. Definitely gets some wiggling going on when... Okay. Get some highlight at the top. Around his eyeballs. And we'll just dry rub all of the tips of 
around the eyes and the top of the nose. I don't know about the mouth yet. over by where they're look peering. I know that that's not just a little bit white. We'll see. So I've got to put in the details and stuff on their features still. Okay, I need to rebase these guys down here. I'm going to rebase, I think, in the, um, let's do it in the antique gold, and then we'll see where we get from there. All right, I'm going to float a little bit of Napa. I've got my stars, my eyes, and everything all um, base coated with the antique gold. Now I'm going to float, I've already dry rubbed down here with the red. I'm going to float just down here in this corner. And maybe just up here in this upper side over here. Just to kiss things with just a little bit more of a glaze. And over here, we'll come out here to this outer edge. Don't draw this in very far. Just kind of cutting across, and then we'll do this lower edge right here. Okay, and then my intention is to bring a little bit of that red popped up into his hat. Okay, I have, I have a conundrum. My conundrum is that um, I'm not happy with my greens up here. I had a color inspiration. Uh, a piece of you know art that I saw these colors on and I loved it but the greens are just dying and they're not making me happy so I'm going to try to fix it with um, olive green and see if that pops it up a little bit and if it doesn't I'm probably going to have to redo my greens. I'm going to keep the green in the sky so we're not worried about that. Okay so I'll start over here on this stem. Oops, hello. Hello bright green. Okay and we'll go ahead and see if we can't pop that up. Okay, it's definitely popping it up. Okay, we might be able to save this. It's also desaturating it a little bit. This is very, very neon in my, in my head. This yellow is going into our yellows in our pumpkin. It's bringing together some stuff going on, so I think that I can like that. That's awesome. I'm really excited about that. I'll come over here. pop that up a little bit. I think what was happening is that um, that yellow green was just um, not coating and not covering. And I also don't like my curls over here. I really thought I would. It adds a little busyness that's unnecessary. So let's see if I can just highlight them away. And if I can, then I won't have to do too much backtracking. If I can't, I'll have to backtrack. Might take a couple of times. I don't want to get it too bright just because I'm trying not to backtrack. Okay, and then I'll get my smaller brush out and we'll do we'll do the small details. Try and find a dry one. Nope, time to get a new one out. These crescent brushes, oh yeah, there went the brush and the paint. These crescent brushes, um, you absolutely have to have at least at least one set of them, if not two. I've got two and I still run out. And it's so irritating when I run out. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to sell you a brush, I'm just telling you what I know. And that is, you will be sad if you don't have the right brush, because this technique is so easy. <laughs> And then you'll have to go and do some weird floaty business if you don't have a dry brush. <clears throat> you 
Yeah, it's really crazy is the yellow green and the olive green are not that far away. And this one's like slightly darker or whatever. This is not very much brighter, but this one has just a little bit more white in it, I think. This one is much more transparent. I think that's also why that didn't work. Okay, now I'm going to pull out a round brush and my olive green. And then I'm just going to dry brush these stems by flicking down the middle with the round brush. Same thing here. Okay, let's give our collar a little bit of a shine. Okay, so like it's a hard plastic kind of deal. We'll give our stems just a little bit of a shine. That means just a little bit stronger highlight. <clears throat> Using the round, and now we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing. I'm going to keep that highlight, I think, on me. We'll go over the top. Okay. Come over the top and round the bend, and then we'll come down the front. So it kind of graduates up. green. A little bit more here. Okay. Well, I don't think you can say our greens are hiding now. <laughs> okay, now we have to decide what we're going to do with the rest of this. Okay. All right, we're going to dry rub Vivid Violet. Go ahead and lock this down on the hat. Just dry it right down the middle with this brim. We can give a little blush on the cheeks of the pumpkin while we've got this color out. How does that look? I think that looks kind of cute. So a little something there. Don't quite know what, but I like it. I think that's what makes paintings fun is when you add just a little hint of this, a little touch of this. Here and there. And we'll come over here and do a little bit more. Well, we've got a shading and highlighting converter um, on the website now, and what's cool about that is like if you wanted to know maybe your lights aren't light enough, you can go on there and you can put in vivid violet. And it tells you um, exactly what color to highlight that if you needed to bring it up another notch. And I'm actually going to go to my website right now. I'm going to look it up. And that's how I'm going to decide what color to highlight Vivid Violet with. Um, yeah, it's uh, on the paint page, um, on the paint category. And you can search for um, shade highlight converter or just shade or converter. And it'll come up. Okay, we're going to highlight with a little bit of vivid uh, I'm sorry, it's petal pink. <clears throat> I don't want this to become a pink hat. I want it to stay a pinkish purple hat. So we'll see what this does, and I may have to change my mind. 
And maybe I'll keep it as a high highlight instead of as a highlight, if that makes any sense to anybody. little bit pink but it's it's still leaning to the purple I think what I'll probably do is shade in a purple and that should keep us grounded in purple these little ears can be pink pink I'm not worried about that let's get a little brush and a little round brush and get his nose a couple little swipes of One more time stronger in the middle of his ear. Now we'll shade. Let's go ahead and shade with dioxazine purple. shade down here. Let's see how that's going to keep that a purple hat instead of making it a instead of making it be a pink hat. Okay, and we can also kind of lump our shading <clears throat> in a deeper way, so kind of like fat, skinny, fat, skinny. In some areas you'll be skinny, in some areas you'll be fat, and that'll help kind of make it be a glaze instead of, instead of just a shadow. Okay, we'll highlight his cheeks just a little bit more up there. And that's with um, Desert Turquoise. And then we'll repeat with Indian Turquoise. And then we probably ought to give his little chinny chin chin a detail here. I think we'll do it here. And I think we can probably go ahead and give his little throat just a slight. movement just a little bit he's going to be very startled by that bug okay I've got to figure out something to do on the hat and we'll figure that out next okay a little bit it's time to start beefing things up. I think we can beef up the highlights in the tail. Try not to cover up all that yummy texture. We worked really hard to get that texture, so don't cover that all up. The tips of his little fingers can get highlighted a little bit more. That way you can see what's going on. Okay. 
looking, looking, looking to see what we can do. I'm going to have a little squinchel under his face. Okay. If we squint at his little fingers, do we think we got there yet? Maybe not. Maybe one last hurrah of, ooh, Indian turquoise. And maybe one last little squiffle put an turquoise in here. We've got his hat based, um, the stripe based with forest green. <clears throat> We're going to use the dry brush. Actually, what we'll do is probably float first in this case. So we'll float with some black green. Just across this side of the stripe. That'll make the hat look like it's turning. One more there. Okay, it's got a nice little stripey thing going on. Next, we'll take our dry brush, which I can't find. And we'll dry brush into the um, festive green. Flick on the paper towel. And then we'll probably have to do one more with the olive green. Right, we'll go into the olive green, if I can figure out which one is olive green. And we'll do the final highlights on the hat. And now I can trace on my spider. Now we've got to get a little bit more, see how we have this great big highlight right up the middle there with the, the green. We need to go into our um, pink, and we need to let me dry my brush out. We'll dry brush into the pink, not dry rub, dry brush. Flick it off on the paper towel, and let's give it a little bit of that same motion. Right up the middle of the hat to carry that. And then this might be where the fold, where that flopped over, comes in. And then we probably could go ahead and give it just a little bit of a hat brim thing. With the petal pink. Give his nose just a little more pop. I have no idea what I'm going to do with the eyes yet. This has been a really fun little project though. I think, I think this is cute. Cute and fun. All right, so I think, I think, I think, I think, we need to bring some other colors into other things, but first let's get that spider on there, and then we'll see what we have. All right, as I get ready to um, paint the spider webs and things like that, then I'm getting out my Raphael, and I'm going to pre-wet pre it. So I'll let it soak, because it has natural fiber bristles, and it needs to wake up. So I'll let that sit aside for just a minute. I've got my spider based in black. And we will be ready to paint some spider webs here. All right, the very first thing we're going to want to do is make our spider webs black. I'm loading thinned black paint in my brush. And I've got to get a good angle on this. Let's back you up a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'm going to paint my spider webs black. And I'm not going to try to make a very thin line. I want them a little bit heavy. They're not going to show very well in black, so what I want to do is I'm going to paint them first, and then we're going to highlight them, but if they're so skinny you can't see them, then you're not going to be able to see the highlights. I'll rinse this brush out, and now I'm going to thin some Indian turquoise. 
This is when I'm going to want real skinny lines. Okay, so I'm going to twist my brush around like the water off the ferrule, need some control, yada yada, right? And now we're going to paint just really thin. This is so light a color, it's almost um, white. Little skip lines next to our black or on our black, either or is fine. Okay, and that is how we're going to do all the spider webs. All right, now we get ready to do the spider itself. So we're going to add some of our sparkly spider web glistening lines. We need to add some of that to the legs. If they're too dark, you won't be able to see them, so we're going to add some sparkle to make the um, spider visible. And we do it on one side of the leg or the other so that we give the impression that the spider um, is sh it's in shadow a little bit. Okay, rinse that brush. And now we'll go to a dry brush. So Patty's favorite, I've got number eight. We're going to go into Desert Turquoise first. Look on a paper towel. And we're going to do shape following strokes. And we're going to lock our... Artist Betty. Okay, I'm sure we're not running our hands or anything. Shape following strokes. And we're going to make him into a kind of a tealy looking but, uh, but butterfly. Okay, no. Maybe not a butterfly. Spider. And then we'll go into Desert Turquoise. Dirty brush is fine. Flick on a paper towel. And, whoops, a little more flick on the paper towel. Okay. And we've got to give them eyes. Let's see, do we need this color anywhere else? Um... Let me see on Kitty Cat if we want to just give him just a little bit more of a highlight up there. Maybe his little fingertips here. Just a little bit more of a highlight. wipe my brush out and I can give his tail a little bit of a cross hatch. Oops. For a little bit more raggedy appearance. Okay, we'll go ahead and put some little white eyeballs right there. He's peering at the cat, the cat's peering at him. Along came a spider. And of course we have to give him little black eyeballs. I decided to base out the kitty cat's ears. Now I'm going to float a little bit of a highlight on the top of kitty's eyes. I think we're going to do it with a desert turquoise. And we'll just float over the top. Little float. Just to finish off his eyes. Well, and I don't like that at all. All right, we're going to try a little bit of the burnt sienna. 
on the cat's eyes. looks. I think I can like that. And now I think we're going to do the same thing on the pumpkin's eyes. Let's shade them. Get you on there. Let's shade them on this back corner over here. I'm using the curved flat so I can kind of swoop into that little corner. Gives them just a little bit more depth, don't you think? And do the same thing here. Come along the bottom, leading with the rounded edge, tuck into the corner, and then start tickling it out. Okay. Yeah, I think that gives them definitely some more depth. I'll repeat that on the other pumpkin's eyes. Oh, we got to do the mouth. Sorry. And the nose. And I guess, actually, watch this. Okay, this is our triple threat eraser. It's got like three points on it. If I lick that and erase the paint that's still fresh but dry, I put that shade on the wrong side, it will erase just dried paint. Now, it won't take paint off that is dried, like it's been dried like a little while, but it will take off paint that's freshly drying. It's a great little trick. Not all erasers will do that. Um, our micro eraser and then that triple threat, I know, do both do that. It has to be made out of a certain kind of something. And I haven't explored what that is. There we go. Now I've got them all in the same corners. Now we'll come over here in the mouth and we'll give it a good big float over in this corner. Something to anchor it down here. All right, now our, pump, our kitty cat needs to be looking at something. So we'll give him little crossed eyes looking up at that spider. Put a little white highlight on his nose. And then let's go ahead and let's change colors and let's line his mouth with a little bit of desert turquoise. Okay, we're going to try a little bit of russet shaded on the pumpkin next to his features. So let's give him just a little bit of... It's almost like makeup, isn't it? Okay, I like it. That adds just that little bit of distinguishing something or another. Same thing here, whoops, getting water all over the place. And you can round that corner if you want to. Yeah, that pops him out just quite a bit, doesn't it? And then we'll take um, the same color, the russet, and we'll give just a little bit of cha-cha-cha going on over here on the one side of his teeth. I don't know if it'll even show on this side. And we'll repeat on this other pumpkin. All right, we'll take a little bit of taffy cream and our filbert brush, and we will just slip slap, staying within the lines, a little bit to the front of his eyes. Let's get that just on the top there. And there I go erasing again. Time for the eraser. And 
and so that stands to reason that it'll be on the top of his nose. <clears throat> and probably on the side of his teeth. Treat him almost like a dry brush. Smooth it out. Yeah, that makes him happy without him being too, too important in the scene. All right, we're going to do the moon on his neck with the burnt sienna. And let's see, I think we'll do the back of his little necklace. Or the back and bottom, that's what I'll do. And then we need to do this little star hanging up here. So let's do the top and the side, the left side. So my thought process is to keep the highlights towards the center. Um, this is anti-center of um, center of interest. So you just have to, I'm using it logically as my reason to keep your eye into the scene. And so now, with a little bit of taffy cream, we highlight. And I guess we'll finish that around. Okay, and that gives them a little sparkle. Same thing up here on our star. Boy, do I want to highlight his eyes. I think I can live with that. Okay, I decided to highlight the other side of his eyes, same technique, and now I'm going to shade the spider with green. Just because I can, <laughs> you know? Okay, now let's see where else. We might want to add, okay, where else do we need to add stuff? Huh. All right, I'm going to go one step backwards, and I'm going to shade at my edge with Diox Purple. I'm going to use a great big ginormous oval glaze. I'm going to side load big. I'm going to end up covering up a little bit of my um, spider webs, but I think that that'll be okay. And I don't know if I need the blue or what, so I may have to do this more than one time. Just need to see what is going to drag out the best in this scene. I want the spider webs to look like they're coming from over the top of the color. So maybe I'll do Diox big, and then I'll do... Um, Prussian blue skinnier. Maybe that's what we'll do. Okay, so that's what we look like. Now maybe I need to soften that. Bring it in a little bit more. And now the truth is let's see if we can drag it across our pumpkins. I think that color is sitting very well. And right over the leaves and complete the circle. I think I can dig it. Okay, this is where we're going to have some fun. We're going to take the ink sweeper. We're going to dip it into half of it into royal purple. I decided I don't like the dark purple. Okay, and then we're going to hold this down and all the way around just to the line of where the spider web starts. We're going to make one side of this the purple and carry it out a little bit. And then we're going to use a jumbo dauber. Okay, here. And we're going to dip that in black. And we're going to carry that color in to the purple while it's wet. 
and that gives us a nice little fade. And you can decide how much you want, and you can decide how much to, to tackle back in the mat. Okay, that gives us a real good fade. I like that. We could go one step further. It gets a little glowing, though, so we want to be a little careful about glowing. And we could do just a tint, just ever so much, of the lavender. Maybe just, I'm going to use a fingertip dauber. No, I'm kind of scared. Just right there at the beginning. Just to give us that little bit of extra pop. Alright, so this is what I've learned. Here is um, slate gray faded into black, and here is purple. And the purple, while I love it, is just getting kind of making me crazy because it just looks like too much purple going on. This looks more neutral. It looks a little creepier, a little scarier. It looks a little more spidery. So I think I'm going to go with that um, just because. So what I've got to undo everything, I'm just going around. These seem to end right about where each of those prongs comes out, which is perfect. So I'm just doing that. I've tipped loaded with one load one side loaded on my um, um, ink sweeper and right up next to hold this down so our noise level goes down right up next to this we take a little bit of our slate gray and put it down pretty strong there okay and then we go back with the black tone anything down that needs toning down. Okay, it's pretty quick. I can do three or four of these at a time before they dry, so they go pretty fast. Okay, for now, for the Piastro Resistance, we go into our, let's find a dry area. Hang on. Where did I start? I'm going to have to hit this with a blow dryer. I'll show you what we're going to do. We've got Glamour Dust Paint in black, and we've got Glamour Dust Paint in Ice Crystal. So I'm going to take two clean um, jumbo daubers. I'm going to side load it so I'm only loading half. Okay. So the ice crystal is going to go on the bottom area and side load only. That way you have a clean area to bring them together. I'm going to flip this around so I can show you on camera. Then the black is going to get the black. And then I'm going to draw that in to do the fade. Okay, look at how awesome that looks. And wait till you see how sparkly it is in person. In person, this stuff rocks. As a matter of fact, let me show you the back side where I was playing. Okay. And so here's, I did a fade in purples. Okay, and I don't know if I can get the glittery. What's fantastic is the glitter does not come off. It is completely safe glitter. It's embedded in that paint. There's no chips to to you know, get on your face and go to church and everybody wonders what you've been up to. So um, anyway, but look at how, how jazzy. I think you can see it on there, can't you? Really reflective. They're sheer colors, so what you have to do is you have to make sure that the color that you put it over is compatible to this color. So I put the black over black, that's easy. And then the white, see how sheer it is over the gray. But it adds just a little bit of supporting to that. Um, and then I've got like I had used the, what is this color, Purple Passion and Lavender to make this fade on the other side. Okay, and so that's how I got that fade. All right, so I'm going to finish this, and I'll be back to show you the finishing touches in the middle. Okay, that makes me pretty darn happy. I like how it's there, and it addresses the spider web, but it doesn't um, distract my eye from the art in the middle. Once it's dry, you can go back around if you want it super sparkly and give it a second coat. Um, the, the particles are so fine, but it's really cool because when it dries on your palette, you can peel it up and it's just like a giant sheet of colored um, glitter. It's, re it's really neat. So now what? I don't know. Let me get this dry and I'll figure it out. All right, I did a test on my border here, and I think I'm going to like that. Now we're going to take our compass. Okay. And my compass that has a lead issue, it looks like. The lead, we have replacement leads. These little wheels just tighten that down. OK, 
Okay, then you just make it. I'm probably going to need it about the smallest it can go. And in between each of these little spider web places, I can make a mark. And all I need is a little hash mark just to keep my tape straight. Okay, so I'll do that all the way around. Then I'll take stretchy tape, and just in pieces that are workable. Okay, and we're going to go over here, and we're going to pull that tail up, and then we'll pull this, stretching, or I'm pulling with this hand, and I'm placing with this hand. Okay, and you ease it down from line to line. Okay, and then you use a fingertip dauber. Fingertip dauber to base coat and a little flat brush to do checks. And I'll show you that as soon as I get my tape on. All right, because I don't want to tape both sides and this is still curing, I'm gonna do it with a brush and I'm gonna flip in towards my tape. Now this can be problemsome if you get any bleeding under, so you wanna make sure that you're really, really sealed down with your fingernail so that you don't end up with a bunch of paint shoved under there. And I think actually what I'll do is I'll come off this side first. And if you could see, that'd be great. Okay, come off of here first, kicking it away from my tape. By the time I get all the way around, I'll do one more coat going the opposite way and that should seal that under there really nicely. Oops, stay off of your glitter. This is one of those times when you wanna take your time and go for accuracy. This looks a little bit wider to me. Okay, so I'm gonna get it all orange and I'll be back. Okay, and we're gonna take the tape off as soon as it's painted. You always want to take your tape off right away. And keep it away from your project because those wet bits on your tape will be bad for you. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do my checks. I'm using Short Bright. Um, I'm using the number six Short Bright. Um, these have been one of those things that are an import, so if they're not available right now, just keep looking, but they are irreplaceable. Um, fantastic brush. Okay, and this, what I like about this versus the, uh, the um, longer flats is it doesn't seem to leave a bunch of ridgy stuff. It seems like the more you can work paint up the brush, the fatter your brush might go. Okay, I've got the checks done, and now I'm going to go into Canyon Orange and just do a little highlight dry brush, if I can get it to cooperate, in the middle of my orange checks. Just a couple little blobs there. They don't have to be smooth. It's better if they have a little texture. Just brightens them up just a little bit. Okay, got our checks all done. It's time to add some whiskers. Got some Indian turquoise whiskers. Make sure you have lots of water in your paint so you can get a nice graceful whisker. Not quite enough water in my paint. You see that shaggy little end there? That's what causes that. You gotta use these fat belly brushes like the Raphael and that'll give you a nice good line too, as long as you have enough water in your paint. All right, so now we've got our little guy. Add some little whiskery things. Alright, I have my stencil. I have Eek Bats stencil. A couple of our stencils have stars on them. It doesn't matter if it's Eek Bats or not. Just one with little stars would be good. And we're going to take a we're going to take a jumbo dauber if I have any more clean. Which I don't think I do. Ah, what's that? Nope. So we're going to take a fingertip dauber, which is a little bit more work, and I'm going to apply tack it over and over around my stars. I'm on a piece of wax paper. I'm going to make sure you do it nice and flat so that you don't get lumps. If you get lumps, then you'll get um, gooiness. This already had a little bit of tacket on it, but what happened was um, 
it got laid on the floor or stepped on by dogs or something like that. And so I ended up with not so tacky tack it. So I'm just re refreshing it. And some just little stars. So I'm just going to do it in the star area. As soon as it's dry clear, I can use it. If you wash out your um, fingertip velvet right away, then you won't have any, res uh, you can reuse it for painting. All right, I'm going to use my stencil to maybe make some little magical moments here. So I'm going to do this little line of stuff. I'm going to use my fingertip dauber and press that down really nicely. And I'm going to use desert turquoise. Ooh, that one is a hardened, I had paint that dried on that one. I haven't figured out how to revive them after you've dried the paint out. Go ahead and tap on. Okay, so now that's got a little bouncing star action going on. Now maybe we'll have a little cluster over here. And we'll make those be green. So I'll get another fingertip dauber. I'll start with forest green. I don't want them screaming stars. Okay, I think these are the ones I'm doing. put just a couple of randoms. Need something in purple. Need another dauber. I think I have about a hundred of these because I use them like crazy. Okay, let's get a couple of little purple moments going on over here. And that'll be in the um, royal purple. Probably need to bring that up to the lavender. So I'll just go back over here and kind of figure that out. And retry with lavender. And just bounce them around. Now remember your colors are going to be all different every old which way because we didn't do them like we didn't put our background in in some kind of measured way. So let's just give ourselves sprinkled stars. So that's coming around there. Let's see what else we can do. Let's go for green, but let's go for festive green. All right, we're going to make a couple of highlighted little stars. I've got the lighter versions of the colors on there, and I'm just going to put a little dry brush moment here and there on some of them. Whoops, that's not dry brush, it's lining. Just a little twinkle for our twinkle stars. So if you're in a lighter area, then do it lighter. If you're in a darker area, you want to do it darker. So I'm using Indian turquoise on my desert turquoise stars. And just pops them up just a little bit. Little bits of jazz. I don't know if I do all of the stars. I think you're gonna 
start wishing you didn't put so many stars if you have to do them all, right? Oops, stay in the lines. We'll go into the greens and we'll jazz those up. Let's see if we can jazz those up. We've got festive green that I'm suspecting. Yeah, that's what I suspected. It just wasn't going to show. So we'll go into our olive green for the highlight for the festive. in my green stars as much as my blue stars. And at this point, my fingers are so painty, I find a clean finger to, to rub on. Okay, so now we need to come up with some stardust. I think just a little, little stream of movement. I'm looking for a dry crescent brush. We'll go into our um, desert turquoise. And we'll bring in a little bit of magical dust that comes and trails down behind these stars. We'll let it land right there. We'll snake that behind his hat. Come and hit his tail. over here to the end of his tail. Ooh, I think I just hit the green. And now we'll come down and around on top of our pumpkins, which will hit a star right there. Okay, so see, notice that I'm doing this with the darkest um, color, the one that's not going to show very much if I screw this up. Okay, and now Come down and put some on his nose. I don't do too much in front of his face. I think we'll come down and out over here. Well, I wish we had some over here. Maybe we can have that start there and end there instead of coming out of the stars. So now we go into our lighter color, which is the de uh, Indian turquoise. Wah! Okay, that's not good. Okay, need a clean spot. There we go. Okay, and then we sneak on behind his hat. And then we hit his tail pretty brightly. And we come over here. And boom, presto. Little magic spells going on all over the place. And then boom, right on his nose. We will have that curve out. Okay, so totally not a fan of what I've got going on down here. My question to myself is how can I fix it? I can make it bigger. After I add some stardust and things like that, it'll probably be better. I think it's my straight line I'm not liking the most. Okay. Now we'll go through and brighten a little bit more. that eye. Camo.
light. I've decided that it looks like somebody's stinky down here. I'm going to wet this with water. I hope my eraser is my hero. There we go. Yeah. I need a bigger eraser. I think this can stop on his forehead. I'm counting on this being my get out of jail free card here. Not quite out yet, am I? Okay, whoops. Keep it wet. If you don't keep it wet, then you don't get out of jail. a few highlights to cover it back up, I will. Okay, and now this is where we keep a wet brush in our hand and we start attacking anything that is strong. I think I can just reglaze that. That doesn't bite me too much. So I think it's interesting to see how to fix things like this. Okay, so here's what we'll do is we'll go back a couple steps in our orange area and in Okay, so I'm going to get his forehead. Just want to warm his colors back up. I'm going to spatter in his face. Oh, I like that kind of glaze of orange on him. Actually, I would probably look like that before I started. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll give him a little kiss of orange, too. Glaze down into his face here. Okay. And then we'll go into a little bit of our marigold color. What do you do when you mess up? You go one step backwards and put a little makeup on it. Okay. I think almost I need to take a little bit of brown. Got some burnt sienna over here. streaks in there. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Makeup. Okay. I do like what I have going on up here. So time to go back to that. Now we need to get out our half inch um, our half inch yes, spatter brush, this thing. Trying to think of what the heck it's called. Okay, so White Wonder, got that name. All right, we're going to spatter, and I don't know, let's spatter in desert Indian turquoise first. Tapping off of my palette. 
Now I want to hit the spots, so I'm going to use a heavy handed brush and I'm going to anchor it and lower it. If I was way up high, I'd have snow everywhere. Okay, so then wherever I want magic to touch down, that's where I want spatters to land. Okay. Now let's spatter with a little bit of olive green on our stem, just a little bit. Get a couple of green spatters in our sky and reinforce that with festive green spatters. How many times in your life do you get to say festive green spatters? Okay, like that. Bring some green down on our pumpkins. And our poor pumpkins need a little bit of, I don't want them to get too like, wow, you know, too loud. So let's do a little bit of marigold. faces and a little bit of the burnt sienna on the bottom. Okay, I think that's about busy enough. That's, I think we have to go white with our spatters in our turquoisey area. Just very faint. Maybe so. Okay, I'm going to try and pop this spider up a little bit in his visibility. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, dry rub, across the back of his highlights. So if you want to make something stand out more, you can brighten it, you can darken around it, you can use an intense color. Let's go ahead and try shading him as well. Okay, I think that pops him just a little bit more. Go on this side. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and try to pump up a couple of the highlights coming down from some of the webs. Bring just a little bit more attention. Okay, so we will give him, because we want him to stand out, a little bit more highlights there. on his web. As we get out to the outer edges, we won't do as much. Just bring it into the middle.
And that pops that just a little bit more out. Now I'll come over here and we'll do a little bit more of that there. We've lost this guy completely over here. Okay. I think that popped him up just a little bit. I think we want to bring just a little bit of dry rub of some of our purple. And I think maybe not purple, maybe in the vivid violet. And probably Napa Plus vivid violet. Not sure. Okay, I'm going to try the violet first. Give it just a little bit of some of this purple down in this area. We'll bring in, yeah, I think maybe grape juice down there. Grape juice on my dirty brush. Give my kiss of it up here. And that carries that around just a little bit better. And then let's take our. Um, our vivid violet and come up into his hat and give that a real temperature moment right there in the middle which temperature is another way that you can control what you see in your artwork okay so give it a little bit more intensity make his hat stand out just a little bit more I think that's a good idea Let's give a little kiss of some pink in his greens, just because we can. All right, so we're going to varnish and enjoy. <laughs> 